Hey there! I want to apologize in advance for this video because there's two things about it that I already know even before I'm done with it. One, it's gonna be too long for a 10 minutes video and too short for a 20 minutes video, you know, if I split it in half. So I can just blabber for as long as I want. And two, beware, I'm in a chatty mood. But first things first, I have so many books that I want to talk to you about, I don't know if you can see them that I'd better get tracking so that I don't necessarily have to talk super fast and look as if I were on something. The first book I want to talk to you about is Our Tragic Universe by Scarlett Thomas. It's the story of one Meg Carpenter, a wannabe writer of literary novels. You think I can relate? Yeah, not really. One difference, for instance, she's stuck in a relationship with a guy named Christopher who finds fault with everything she does. Well, I've given up relationships altogether. Now, jokes aside, she's a ghostwriter and her editor sends her books to review. The weirdest of them turns out not to have been sent by her editor. And that's how mystery and the strange factor comes into the picture. Uh, it's a worthy follow-up of um, Mr. Y. So if you liked her previous books, there's no reason why you shouldn't like this one too. But you know, I always sound so nice with each and every book, but I think that's only because I'm an omnivorous reader and I have to be more strict. At least that's how I feel. So, flaws. There are so many themes and themes within themes, it's messy. Like often happens with Scarlett Thomas, uh, you get quite excited and intrigued by what might be about to happen and I did feel those moments weren't followed through. Somehow, I feel like she rarely uh, delivers. I mean, I, I feel she has a problem with endings and tying loose ends, you know? I don't know, is it just me? Do you feel the same? But still, it's compelling in its own way. Her writing style, it's amazing. I mean, let's admit it. And also there's the sympathetic hearing and the unfathomable story. And all of this is enough to keep you interested throughout the book. Somehow, this sort of strange is not exactly my cup of tea, but I like it anyway. I don't know what's wrong with my voice, by the way. Next is a book that's different from any other book I've shown you in this series of videos. It's Point and Line to Plane by Vasily Kandinsky. It's the result of a long development and maturation of intense theoretical thought, and it's based on his personal experience and paintings, obviously. It's a sort of metaphysics of shape and form. It's really, really interesting. I have a problem with modern and contemporary art. Uh, I don't think I really get it. Like, uh, I like it, but I don't think I understand it. Like with Kandinsky, for instance, I love how he treats colors and shapes, but then I see the title of the painting and I go, what? So this is the main reason why I chose to read this, because I wanted to see through and to try and understand, which I don't think I did. Anyway, this book is really, really interesting. It's philosophical in some ways. Okay, now this I was given as a present by a friend, and I don't mean to sound ungrateful or anything, obviously, but this is why I had to read this in Italian. And uh, I don't think I've ever read anything from the Hitchhikers uh, in Italian, uh, so this is a first. Anyway, it's Owen Colfer. Yeah, I googled the name. Um, it's called And Another Thing. It came out on the 30th anniversary of the first book, so that would be October the 12th, 2009. And the author was given permission by Adam's widow to write this. It takes off exactly where Mostly Harmless ends, uh, which in a way is a good thing, because Adams himself uh, apparently wanted to end the hitchhiker on a slightly more upbeat tone than Harmless is. Apparently he admitted, as to be honest many have, mostly Harmless to be a slightly bleak book. So if, just like me, you've cried your heart out over the sound of doubt, you can't miss this. Even though... I'm being really cruel today. Mm, I like it. Anyway, even though I was saying, uh, in my opinion, this one has Apprentice written all over it, just where Don't Panic used to be. We all know by now Jonathan Leatherman is no fool. 
writes, and this is his new novel, Chronic City. It's set on Upper East Side in Manhattan, and it's influenced by such as Philip K. Dick and Hitchcock's Vertigo. It concerns a circle of friends, and the narrator is a faded child star actor whose name is Instedman. It's about the hollowness of modern life. And uh, even though Jonathan Latham is capable of spinning surreal scenes that are both noir and comedy, um, sometimes he, I think he gets tedious and redundancy substitutes profundity. I mean, sometimes it's really style of a substance, just for the sake of effect. To me, again, this is only my opinion. Instead, men sometimes speaks in a slightly archaic voice that reminded me of Woodhouse, P.G. Woodhouse. And I strongly advise you to read Woodhouse if you like Douglas Adams, because it's just the natural evolution. So I was saying, the, the main character, he's always so baffled and confused that um, you don't perceive him as a <clears throat> reliable narrator. Still, obviously, it's a pleasure to read it. But to me, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think this will resonate in my heart for a long time. Okay, embarrassment time number one. I googled for hours searching for the correct pronunciation of this, and apparently it's something like Zeton. Okay, let this be enough. It's by Dave Eggers, the staggering genius, obviously, and um, the name of this book is the surname of its lead man, and it's not a character, it's a true life hero. Uh, it's the story, the true story of Mr. Seaton. Uh, I will write his entire name down here, and I won't even try and read it, because I've embarrassed myself plenty enough. But please, send a video response or a comment you know, with a suggestion on how to read that. Anyway, it's the true story of Mr. Zayton, a prosperous 47-year-old, father of four, a Syrian-American who decided to stay through Hurricane Katrina when it struck New Orleans to protect his house and to pass supplies and help those he could. Uh, a week later, he abruptly disappeared. Again, it's a true story. I don't know, have I stressed this enough? It's true, it's a true story. It's interesting and it's extremely shocking at times. Uh, there's this surreal atmosphere that's made even more surreal by the fact that you know this actually happened. Uh, it's the result of an extensive research and Zeton's family uh, actively collaborated to this, so it, I think it's a very precious book. I get this asked over and over again. What do I think of Charles Bukowski? Well, I think his posthumous legend continues to grow, and it's worth it. I think he is deliciously degenerate and perverse and wicked. It's obscene and lyrical. In fact, Totem is a great way, I mean, in my opinion, is a great way to get to know him, as he follows the wanderings of his alter ego around America during World War II. It's pathetic, it's sordid, it's bitter, and it's brilliant. To sum it up. So this answers your question. No, I'm still not sleeping. <laughs> Embarrassment time number two. I've googled it and apparently, uh, well the majority goes for Michael Shabon. So I'll go with this. This is Michael Shabon, Maps and Legends, Reading and Writing Along the Borderlands. This is a collection of 16 essays. Several of them are uh, defenses of the author's works. Uh, but some of them are more autobiographical and um, they explain how he came to write some of his most popular books. This had a misadventure when it came out because obviously there was a release date and some online stores sent it before that date. Um, so somehow it was preceded by harsh advanced criticism. It got milder in time but kept going along the lines of, I can't imagine an audience for this. I am an audience for this. So we could go like an AA meeting. Like, you know, you, you, you make a video response, you stand up and you go, Hi, my name is Federica, I read Maps and Legends, and frankly, I liked it. Only if it's true, though. 
Lying is not good for your soul. Okay, told ya. We need to split this in two. I'll see you there.